I've heard a lot of people talk about the Apple ecosystem lately and how other companies or platforms are catching up. And in some aspects, that's definitely true, but I still think it's really hard to match the entirety of Apple's. You can definitely mimic bits and pieces of the ecosystem, especially when it comes to more common features like airdrop or copy and pasting between devices. But the actual seamless nature of how all of Apple's products work together is not easy to replicate. And it's still something that really sets Apple apart. A lot of these features you may not even know about, say, if you're a new Apple user. I know it took me a long time to actually dig into all of them myself, and Apple keeps adding new ones every year. So today, I want to dig into as many of these as I can on Apple's newest operating systems to help you get the absolute most out of these products. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. When we talk about product ecosystems, we're essentially referring to the interconnectivity or seamless transition of functionality between our devices. Basically, where we're able to perform or start an action on one product and finish it on another without having to jump through any hoops. Apple often refers to this as continuity, and they started introducing the first features in this tool set about 11 years ago, which I think at this stage, most people probably probably know about, but they're worth digging into because they're the foundation for everything else here. The first thing that you think of when it comes to the ecosystem is likely AirDrop, where you can share files between your own devices or with a friend that's nearby. There's nothing that you really need to set this up to get working, but for almost every feature here, you're gonna have to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on. And the only real requirement for this to work is to have your devices within about 10 meters of each other. Now, there are a few ways of using AirDrop, the traditional way of doing this is to find a file or a photo and look for the share icon on iOS, iPadOS, or macOS. Or on macOS, you can control click or right click on a file and select share, go to airdrop, and from there you can just select any other active devices or users and it'll share the file. If you're sharing between iPhones, you also have the option of sharing selected photos or contact information by bringing the phones together. And you can turn this off or on and adjust the visibility of your devices to other users on any platform by going to settings, general, and hitting airdrop. I found that works fine for smaller files, but larger ones can tend to struggle, where you may want to use shared folders or the collaboration feature that we'll get into in a bit. But sticking with the basics for now, probably the thing that I use the most out of anything here is Universal Clipboard. That should work by default, but if it doesn't, in settings, you can go to General, Airplane Continuity, and you should see an option in there to enable handoff, but with that on, I can easily copy and paste between my phone, iPad, and Mac with virtually no issues whatsoever. That handoff setting that's enabled is also a feature in itself, and it's actually quite useful, where you can start a task in an app on one device and pick it up on another. So let's say that I'm browsing the web on my phone and I'm buying something or I want to look at something on a bigger screen. If I go over to my Mac, in the dock, you'll see that app will show up with a little phone icon where if I click it, it'll open up the same page on my desktop and it works the other way around too, where if I go from Safari on my Mac and hop on my phone, if I open up the app switcher, you'll see that I have a tab where I can open up that same page on the phone. That works not only with Safari, but with a host of other Apple apps and with some third party apps. You just need to make sure that you have any handoff compatible apps installed on both devices. Very similar to that is another one that I use on a semi-regular basis, and that is Continuity Camera. Continuity Camera uses your iPhone or iPad camera to perform tasks on your Mac and works in a variety of ways, but for starters, let's say that I'm writing an email in the mail app or a document in Pages, Notes, Keynote, or Freeform, and I want to take a photo and attach it to that document. In any of these apps on my Mac, I can either go to File, Insert from iPhone or iPad, or if there's an insert tab in the menu, like in Freeform, you'll see that same option. Then go to take photo, where your camera app will then pop up on your phone. You can take a photo and it will automatically insert it into the document. 
I don't find photo insertion super useful, but I do use the option right below that quite a bit where you can scan a document. It's basically the same thing, but the camera on your phone will optimize the photo of the document. So it actually looks like a legitimate document and not just a photo. I tend to use that for receipts or maybe any paperwork that I might need to send out. And again, very similar to this is an option right below take photo and scan document in the same insert menu that says add sketch. That is a feature called continuity sketch where you can use your iPad or iPhone to draw something out and insert it into those same apps. So let's say that maybe you have a contract that you need to sign in your inbox. You can send this to your iPad and then use your Apple Pencil to get an accurate signature and place it in the dock. Finally, the last continuity camera feature is probably the most recent one, and that's the ability to use your iPhone as a webcam. Say, if you don't like the quality or placement of the one built into your Mac, or you've got a Mac Mini and you just don't have one. That should work in any app that uses a webcam, whether it's Google Meet, Zoom, FaceTime, and so on. And if it's not already selected by default, you should be able to go into your app settings for camera selection, and your iPhone should be listed both as a camera and a microphone. When it is selected, you'll get a notice on your phone screen that your camera is in use and you should see the image coming from the back camera of your phone on your Mac along with a mic audio if you've got that selected. Now, if this isn't working for you at all, on your iPhone, you can go to settings under general, go to airplay and continuity and make sure continuity camera is toggled on. You may notice an option right above continuity camera in the settings menu called iPhone mirroring. And that was introduced last year where you can use your iPhone right from your Mac with your phone screen locked. To use that, you'll just want to open up the iPhone mirroring app on your Mac, where you'll then be prompted to enter your passcode on your iPhone, and then your Mac will ask you if you'd like to receive notifications from your iPhone. Those will show up in the top right corner, just like your other notifications, but fair warning, they can get annoying. They can tend to pop up a lot, and anytime you click one, it's just going to open up the iPhone mirroring app, so you may or may not want to enable those. It's not a huge deal. You can always change that on your Mac if you go to settings and under notifications, Click allow notifications from iPhone and you can toggle that off or on. And you'll also see another option there to allow live activities from iPhone. And that's new in macOS 26 where you can see live activities just like you would see on your iPhone screen. But that's all we really need to do. And as you can see, you get your iPhone screen in this window where it behaves just like it would if you were using the physical device. There is one more thing that I'd like to mention with iPhone mirror which is also brand new in macOS 26. And I did mention it last week, but if we open up the apps browser by clicking on the apps icon in the dock, you'll notice that if I have my iPhone apps selected to show from this ellipsis menu, those will just show up alongside our Mac apps. Someone asked me why you'd want to see your iPhone apps in here and you won't just see them, but if you click on them, they will open up in iPhone mirroring. So let's say that you've got an app that you'd like to access that only exists on your phone and not on your Mac. You can easily use it this way versus having to pick up your phone. Similarly, we can add widgets from our iPhone to our Mac by right clicking or control clicking on the home screen wallpaper and going to edit widgets. And as you browse around through these, you'll see that there's a little indicator noting which widgets are from your iPhone. Beyond that, we've got some more traditional ecosystem features between the iPhone and Mac, where you can text people from the Messages app on macOS similar to your phone. And you've been able to do that and answer calls from your iPhone on your Mac for years, but in macOS 26, you now have a dedicated phone app with all the same features that you get on your phone. I went over all those in my last video, which I'll link in the description, but that means that you can now dial out calls directly from your Mac through your iPhone cell connection, and I believe should work the same way if you're using an iPad with a cellular connection. Speaking of which, there are some iPad specific ecosystem features that can be quite beneficial when used with a Mac. The first one being universal control. 
Universal Control is going to allow us to move back and forth between our Mac and iPad screens with a single keyboard and mouse. And this will work not just with an iPad and a Mac, but across multiple Macs or iPads as well. To make sure that you're set up to use Universal Control, on a Mac you just want to go to Settings, hit Displays, and at the bottom of the screen you'll see an Advanced button that you'll want to click where you'll want to toggle on the first two options for things to work properly, where the last one is optional. I usually leave the automatic reconnect option off because it can sometimes be annoying if you or someone else is using one of your devices and then all of a sudden your Mac pointer just disappears to another screen somewhere. It's definitely worth playing around to see what works best for you, but on the iPad we'll go over to settings, general and under airdrop and continuity turn on cursor and keyboard that should be all we need to do and now when we put two devices beside each other we can push our cursor towards the edge of the screen and after a second or so you'll see it push through the other side where you can then just continue pushing it through and you're good to go you can then use the same keyboard and mouse to type or navigate around the os you can drag and drop files from one machine to the other or within some apps like messages and you can you can even make sketches on your iPad and move them over to Keynote on your Mac. At any point, if you feel like your displays are misaligned, you can go into your settings on your Mac and under displays, you should be able to arrange the positions of the screen so that moving back and forth between them feels pretty fluid. Similarly, if you don't want to use any of these features, but you just want to use your iPad as a secondary display to your Mac, you can do that with a feature called Sidecar. All you need to do there, other than making sure Handoff is enabled and your iPad is unlocked, is either go to Control Center and under Screen Mirroring, you can select your iPad and extend the display to act as a secondary monitor, or on macOS, you can just hold down on the green button on a window and select Move to iPad to do the same thing. Again, you can arrange the displays in the same way that you would if you were using Universal Control. And Sidecar is very similar to AirPlay, where any AirPlay supported displays will connect wirelessly over the same network on macOS, iOS, or iPadOS. You'll see that when I go into screen mirroring, any Apple TVs in my network are also in here. So I can turn those into another screen if I want to, and the Apple TV itself has some great ecosystem features as well. If you go into your Apple TV settings under video and audio, you can navigate down to calibration, and within here you can use your iPhone to color calibrate the display and sync the audio up to reduce any lag. Sometimes when you connect an Apple TV to your TV, especially if your audio is running through an external speaker, there can be a visible delay between what you see on the screen versus what you hear. So this will alleviate that, and the color calibration will make sure that you're getting a nice, accurate image. You can also use both your iPhone and your Apple Watch as a remote with the Apple TV by hitting the remote icon in Control Center on iOS, or by selecting the remote app on your watch. And the nice thing about using your phone in this way is that you can use your phone's keyboard for any input, rather than having to fumble around pressing characters on a remote. On top of that, if you use a password manager, that will work in here, so it makes signing into things a lot easier. Whether you're using Apple's own passwords app or a third party one. And speaking of passwords, let's say that you've connected to a new Wi Fi network. After you connect one Apple device, you'll be prompted if you'd like to share the same Wi Fi password with all your other devices, which is super handy. That really leads into the interconnectivity of everything across your Apple account and your network. For instance, if I switch a focus mode on one device, it'll switch across all my others. So you'll notice that when I do things like start workouts, on my watch. I go into a fitness mode where I've got my notifications silenced and my iPhone screen changes and then when I stop it just reverts back to normal. I'm doing a lot of that via customizations and shortcuts which in many cases works across all your devices if you have custom shortcuts set up for things like locking doors or adjusting lights and there's a ton of cross-platform compatibility between photos productivity apps like pages freeform and notes and of course your iCloud drive as well a lot of folks are unaware that you can collaborate with other people on a lot of those file types or apps that I just mentioned and share folders within your iCloud drive with other people as well that works somewhat similar to airdrop where I can click those same share icons in macOS and iOS on specific 
files and folders. There's an option to either send a copy of a file to someone or collaborate with them. And another option where I can select specific people to invite to a file or anyone with a link can access. Then from the share menu, I can select invite with link and it'll generate and copy a link to that file or folder where I can paste or send it to other people. I use this a lot for larger files rather than using AirDrop because it's normally pretty fast and you just run into a lot less issues. Finally, there are a couple more hardware things I wanna mention that you rarely find on anything outside of Apple. The first being unlocking devices with other devices, especially if you're using an Apple Watch. You can automatically unlock your phone or your Mac with your Apple Watch, where on iOS or iPadOS, you can go to settings, go to face ID and passcode and scroll down to unlock with Apple Watch and turn that on. On macOS, you'll go to settings, touch ID and password and toggle on Apple Watch. And then as long as your watch is on your wrist and unlocked, it'll unlock these other devices. And the cool thing about this is it works in reverse with your iPhone, where if you go to the watch app under passcode, you can toggle on unlock with iPhone. You'll also find other hardware like AirPods will automatically connect to whatever device you play media through without having to pair them or switch them through Bluetooth every time you use them. And they can be controlled from any other app device and most of these devices along with air tags are all traceable within the find my app with varying degrees of discoverability now i'm sure that i could probably dig into ecosystem related features for an hour longer if i wanted to but i just wanted to give a broad look at where things currently stand and how a lot of this works but if there's anything here that i did not mention that you want to bring up feel free to drop a comment down below but that's all I have for you today. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me design an ecosystem feature that gives you a round of applause whenever you crash your device, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.